right. Welcome to another episode of Something for the People. This is your boy B Hunt, aka the Silent Prophet, along with my co-host Big Country. What's good, people? Mister uh, Too Real for TV. Too Real for TV. That's why he do podcasts. All right. We gonna jump right into the topics because I noticed what you came to see. Cool beans. What differences between you and your partner drive you nuts? <laughs> well, most people won't admit certain things, but I'm like, hey, that's why we have a podcast. That's, that's why, why we here to admit it. Like, one of the things that I guess drives me nuts about my wife is because, like, me and my wife, we... Uh, we see eye to eye on certain things, but one of the things that we bump heads about is because I'm more nonchalant. I roll with the punches as they come. Mm-hmm. She's more of the, oh, I have to know right right now. I have to always know certain things. I'm, and how it drives me nuts sometimes is you never know everything in life. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. Sometimes you yeah, have to uh, jump out there. Yeah, jump out there and get to it kind of stuff. But my wife will be like, oh, well, what happens if this happens? And we roll with the punch when that happens. But what happens if this happens? And I'm like, same thing. Whatever happens, we deal with it when it happens. Mm-hmm. And then we roll with the punches. Yeah, what will be, will be. Yes, and I look at it as, as long as we're on the right path and we're trying to do the right things, it'll all work itself out. True. But it gets to that point with me and my wife sometimes. It's like, you're just so nonchalant about it. I'm like, it's not that I'm nonchalant. It's just I have faith in the things that I do. Right. I wouldn't, and I'm not saying she doesn't have faith, but it's the fact that I have faith enough that I know if I'm on the right track, God's going to see me through no matter what. Yeah. Mine's similar, but not the same. How it works for me. So, I have this idea, this concept in life to where it's always about being better. Yeah. Now, granted, sometimes, I got to tell the truth, I don't necessarily know what better is. So I'm moving towards something that may not be as good as I thought it was, but I'm trying to, my whole point, the intent of me moving was to, in fact, be better. Okay. Right. My wife, on the other hand, her thought process is like 100%. If it ain't broke and nobody complains, it ain't wrong. Leave it alone. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I get it from a standpoint, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But mm-hmm. I'm also like, just because it ain't broke don't mean you don't you, you don't you improve don't, yeah, you don't improve or, or, or change it out you see what i'm saying yeah like if i kept the same car that i had from middle school or high school or high school yeah high school then you know granted it broke down but i knew i knew almost every part on the car i could fix it so technically that's not broke if i can if it's dependable if if i want to get from a to b Mm-hmm. In this car, I know I can do it, right? Okay. However, I also know if I drive down here to the dealership and buy me a new car, I ain't got these issues. So, it ain't broke, but I still decide to make it better. I'm just a person on the whole maintenance and, 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 and push the envelope. Be better than what you were. And even if you don't know if it's 100% better, test it to see if it can be better. Yeah. yeah, like, I can understand that because I always want to be better. I look at it as, like, if I could be a little better than the day I was before, kind of stuff like that, then it's like, okay, it may not be a lot, but that little bit helps yeah. each and every time. Right. Like, doing maintenance on your life, doing maintenance on your relationship because I do believe in a relationship. If you don't do maintenance on it, and I don't see a lot of people that actually truly do maintenance. They right. always do that recovery. They do. What happens is they'll do repair yeah, and call it maintenance. But I'm like, maintenance is you constantly working on it to ensure that it's an optimal condition. That way, it never gets to the point of it needing repair. Yeah. 
if I show up and and, and it's like, oh, you, your intimacy levels are lacking, your uh, attention to detail as far as the kids, the house, the, every, when stuff starts lacking, it's like, I don't know, I got to jump back in the game and get it back rolling. Because the thing about it is, the best thing that happened to cars for a lot of people was the check engine light or the oil. Yeah. Because you get so comfortable in it being so reliable that you don't, unless somebody tells you, no, I'm I'm not operating at, at peak condition right now. You wouldn't know because you're never looking for, and I, and I get it, that I don't want you to go and actually look for issues. Mm-hmm. I want you to go look for things to make better. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't want you to be like, oh, it's a problem that you don't do this. No, no, no. I feel like we can do this But you should always want to make things better. It's like if, okay, let's say I make, uh, let's say I make uh, 200 bucks a day. Why wouldn't I want to try to improve it where I can make 300 bucks a day or 400 bucks Mm -hmm. a day? Hey, maybe I could get to five. If I don't get to five... I'm not going to trip about it, but at least I'm trying to. Constantly trying. Yes. Like, you should always be stretching. You should always be trying to reach that next <coughs> that next level. Because not just in relationships, but in life in general, when people get to a point of being content, think about it. The experiment that they use. I don't know if they did this in your elementary, but they did this in ours all the time. They go get a glass and they put sugar at the bottom of the glass and they pour water on top, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, over time, all the sugar settles at the bottom. Okay. And then it was like, in essence, you got sugar water, but mm-hmm. it's going to be really, really, it's going to be regular water up to a certain point, then it gets really sweet. You got to agitate the water. You got you to gotta stir. Yeah. And it can be sweet throughout. You know what I'm saying? It could, it could, we can have sweet from the from the top of the glass to the bottom if we're willing to agitate. Don't let it settle and just accept what it is. It don't have to accept what it is. Your friend, like we talking about relationships, we could also talk about friendship. Like your friends shouldn't just want you to accept where you at. Yeah. If they just sitting back and just accepting, like, oh no no, they ain't done nothing. They ain't gonna do nothing. They been this way since I met them. That really ain't the person you should be calling your homeboy. Like, no, yeah. don't get me wrong. Certain things about you, yeah, I'm gonna let. If, if you're just a generous person, okay, then they just generous, fam. But at the same time, even in that, I'm gonna push you. Be like, but just because you're generous, don't mean you a fool, fam. They shouldn't. You shouldn't let nobody run you over. Yeah. Okay. Easy way I look at it is like if we talk about our friendship, we've been friends for a while, and even then, I still. And like last episode um, with uh, Mr. Patel, and he was like, oh, yes, threw him under the bus right there. I'm like, yeah, I have to throw him under the bus because if I don't throw him under the bus sometimes, no. he's not going to get up and do it like it, he need to. It's not. It's like there are some points in time where it's like as a friend, I want you to be your best, whether it gets irritating or not. And I'm not just going to let you settle because if I let you settle, sometimes you forget and be like, you know what? I'll do it next time next or time. I'll do it later. But it, what I'm saying on top of that, to add to that, it's like, fam, I've been kicking it with you. If, if you being cool with me or liking me hinges right here on whether I let you slide or not. It's a problem. Yeah. I shouldn't, you should, your, your friend friends, you shouldn't expect them to let you make it. Out of all the people in your life, outside of your family, of course, certain people shouldn't let you make it. If I say you're my best friend, you should not let me make it. Yeah. You should be like, nah, bro, you got to be on top of your game because if the iron is sharper than the iron, if you looking dull, then in essence, you gonna, we going to both dull out. So somebody got to stay. No, nah, bro. Here we go. That word that a lot of people hate. Accountability. <laughs> yeah. Hold your people that you cool with accountable, fam. It's okay. But see, going back to our original statement. What are things that irritate you with? the? Because I know there's things that my wife say 
irritate her about me. Just like I said, with my nonchalantness. And it's not that I'm nonchalant because of the fact that I don't care. It's I'm nonchalant because I'm not going to burden you with certain things that I know you're not prepared for, right. like mentally, uh, like in the relationship. And what I mean by prepared for is like as a, as a husband, as a father, is like I make sure that things are taken care of. My family's taken care of. Bills are taken care of. I make sure things run smoothly. Right. If they don't run smoothly, I have to figure out a way for them to run smoothly or it's going to irritate me. Now, if I give so much pressure as in showing you that these things aren't running smoothly or this didn't run the way I wanted it to, mm -hmm. all it's going to do is make you think and make you worry. Mm -hmm. and if it make you think and make you worry, then you may go outside the parameters that we need mm -hmm. to try to do more. And I'm like, that wasn't called that wasn't for. What we, that's not what we needed. Yes, that's not uh, how we need to move. And I know somebody will be like, well, you know, you're supposed to talk about any and everything. To a certain extent, I do agree that we should talk about certain things. But other things is, as long as I know you got that, and you taking care of that, mm -hmm. I'm not going to bother with that. Now, if it's something that you let me know, honestly, I don't got that. I I need assistance on it. Then something. it's like, okay, cool. I know I need to step in. But unless you let me know you need assistance, I still think you got it. Right. Just and like as a husband. Like, yeah. And that's why I'm like, okay, you know. I understand there are certain things that irritate both of us about certain things. And I could understand from her point of view how I feel about things. And I hope she can understand from my point of view how I feel mm -hmm. about certain things. But getting that balance is what equals and gets people to understand. Right. It's definitely, it's definitely like, a, like you said, it's definitely a balance. It's definitely a, it's just a, it's just paying attention and, and not just paying attention, but having like a want to insert yourself into something to, in fact, make it better. And going back to what you said, when certain stuff comes up and I don't necessarily want to give you the answer to it or burden you with it, it's because a lot of the stuff that I'm dealing with, I need expert advice. Yeah. Okay. And I know. If I start telling you, oh, go look this up, go find this, go find it. At that point, you feel like a secretary. Like, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> this is your yeah. problem, but you telling me to go find all the answers and give them to you. Well, that's what I need. You, you said you want to help me. I don't I don't need nobody else to hear me complain about the problem. Yeah. Half, the pro half of any solution is stating the problem clearly. I already know my problems. So yeah. me telling you my problem don't necessarily help me. But if my now only time I want to give you hundred percent of the, the the problem is when you the problem. Like if True. if you the reason I'm having a hard time, fam, I'm gonna tell you exact look, you're doing this and I don't like it. Yeah. Can you fix that? Because you're the only solution I got. And I hate to harp on cars and going back to, you know, flat tires, but I don't want to. I don't call my wife for a flat tire. I just yeah. don't see the significance in it. Cause you're not fit to go pack a tire up in the truck and drive it out to me. True. If you did get to my car, granted, I'm certain. Granted, it's crazy, but it's true. My wife and a lot of people I do know that's <laughs> that's male. They, my wife can change the tire. There's <laughs> a lot of males I know who cannot, which is weird to me. YouTube helps us all. Keep that in mind. YouTube True. University can assist you greatly, but whatever. My, though my wife can change the tire, why would I require my wife to change the tire? And I'm sitting right there. Yeah. So I'm like, calling you for this situation is not really beneficial to me. I don't need to tell you that I'm not mobile right now because I'm going to call down. It don't help you in any way. It don't help me in no way. So I don't see the significance in having that conversation with you. Well, only way I could see myself telling my wife is just in case she's wondering where I'm at. Like, no. oh yeah, I gotta change this tire real quick. 
Like, for example, a couple months ago, my tire went down and all that stuff when I finished working out. And then I called my wife and I was like, hey, I'm going to just let you know, I got to change my tire. And then I called you and I was like, man, I think I need a jack. But then once I found uh, the jack, I was like, well, hell, this ain't the right one, but I can make it work. Mm -hmm. After then, I was like, well, uh, nah, uh, you asked me, do you need some help? No, nah, I'm good. I'll let you know if I actually need some help. Yeah, Other than that, this is like, okay. What's the point? Or being bored and like, hey, somebody holler at me while I'm all, uh, over here um, yeah. changing this tire because I, I'm bored. I, when I'm talking, I'm trying to put you in the best place to succeed, right? Yeah. If I call my girl in that situation, it's not necessarily to help me do nothing. I'm going to fix this whole issue independent of you. Yeah. But maybe I just want to have a conversation. I may, I'm, like you said, I'm bored. I just want to talk to somebody while I go and handle this little situation. Yeah, it's like self sufficient. It's just, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm good at that. I know how to do for self. If I don't know nothing else, I know how to keep me going. But you ever notice one thing people don't understand? As adults, we should all be self sufficient. Yeah, like that's why it's called being an adult because. You know, when you're a child, your child uh, depends on you as a parent. Mm -hmm. But when you uh, your child grows up and becomes an adult, that's when they should be self-sufficient when it's like they know how to do it. Yes. Every now and again, you may need advice. You may need a little bit of help on certain things, but you should be self-sufficient enough right. to be like, I got it. I get it done. You, the ultimate goal for parents is, like I said long ago. I give you the tools and I let you use them. So before you get to knowing how to do all this, I'm pretty much hands on. No, this how you tie your shoe. Now you tie your shoe. Okay? You don't need you don't need me no more for that. If you forget to loop the loop, I'm here for counsel at that point. Hey, you forgot to loop the loop. Yeah. But you going I have to push you towards self sufficient because I know at a certain point, only person you're gonna really be able to rely on is you. Right. True. It, I I got an expiration date just like everybody else, and I know they keep talking about health care and all these things is coming forth to elongate life. But I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if living forever is the idea. <laughs> you know, then just being real. Yeah. Like, I mean, but <sighs> only people I think that uh, want to live forever are people that are afraid to die. Right, I just like I don't see myself wanting to live forever. What for? I don't see the point. Oh, I want to see what it's like a hundred years from now. For I what? don't. For what? Because right now, kids get on my nerves. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my kids, but kids in general. Now, some of the things I see, I'm like, when did we become this? Why did we do this? You talking the about the world's so sensitive now? You talking about kids? I'm talking about adults. Yeah, yeah, adults get on my nerves. <laughs> it's like I'm an <laughs> '80s baby. I remember when the playground was concrete. Concrete. You fall, you bust your butt, get up. Mm -hmm. You remember when you had the merry-go-round and um swing out that hose? Somebody push it real hard, and if you're not holding on tight, you gone. You gone. You over there in the bushes somewhere, yeah. and you get up. Do it again. And, and you remember, I feel like they did this intentionally. You know how they got like the no hurt spray now to do the, the mm -hmm. antibacterial? I was, it always hurt. Yeah. So you get scratched up. You get scratched up. You be like, I'd rather just endure the pain than go yeah. over there and hurt more with you. Mm-hmm. Because all you going to do, walk, walk over there. Yeah. Ah. ah. And it's like, yeah. well, hell, that hurt worse than the scratch. The burn, the burn lets you know it's working. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait. But I'm like, I couldn't see myself. Oh, uh, I don't want to see what the world's like in a hundred years from now. I really don't, yes, man. because right now, it as I'm an '80s baby. I was born in the '80s, grew up in the '80s, um, '90s. Like I remember cartoons. I remember when TV went off. I bro, when the American flag came on TV mm -hmm. at the end of the night. Remember that. Dun, when dun, cartoons, dun, dun, don't get me wrong, there are some cartoons now that have substance, but I remember a point in time where the majority yeah. of television, not just your cartoons and educational programming, not 
everybody had a real message. It wasn't just, mm -hmm. I need to put content out just to put content out. I'm trying to tell you something, and hopefully it betters the way you live. Yeah. I'm from that era. I'm from the era where Pizza Hut is showing you why you should not <laughs> be charged for pizza. Oh, Never man. pay full price for pizza, especially after Ninja Turtles. Okay? Yeah. If you need clarity on that, just leave me a comment and I'll show you what I've seen. <laughs> I don't want to traumatize you unless you need it. Mm. <laughs> unless you ask for this. Yeah. Okay? But, no, nah, I'm just saying. Yeah. Just, like, I come from a different era. I couldn't see myself wanting to be that old, like... Some people are like, oh, well, that'd be 200. The hell you say? I, I, what I'm saying is, I forgot the, it's a dude, uh, Tithonius or something. But either way, he was, he made a wish and he wished to live forever. What he didn't wish for was to be healthy while living forever. It's, it's, it's a, mm. I don't know. So, he just got older and older and, and, and weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker, but he would not die. And so the moral of the story is a lot of people saying they want to live forever. I just want to be healthy a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be in a space to where if I'm 70 years old and I want to go on a three mile walk, I don't have to question whether do I need my defibrillator? What do I need? Mm -hmm. Do I need my oxygen? You need to tank? make sure you got them depends on. Yeah. Nah, I just want to be able to get up, stand up, and go out and come right on back. Mm -hmm. And just, I want to live yeah. until I'm gone. I don't want to be in a space or a state where, hey, I need excessive care. You know, because at that point, I, I don't get it confused. I don't want nobody to feel like I'm telling you that elderly people are a burden on society. What I'm saying is I personally would feel that way. So I don't want to put my, I don't want to put me on nobody. Like I, I want to be able to be in a space where I can continue to take care of myself until I go to meet the maker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Personal. But like I said, just in case somebody tidbitting me, chopping out a little snippets, <laughs> Old people deserve care and love just like everybody else. <laughs> Take that tidbit, okay? Get that. if you ever get a if you ever get a, a, a snippet from me, ask for the extended cut, please. Because sometimes I say something and you can just take that and you can run a mile, okay? I need you. This is where you stop, okay? That's what I want you to do. All right. You know what grinds my gears? how dependent we have become as people on technology for example AT&T and other carrier other carriers not too long ago had a nationwide outage and nobody could be on their phone like nobody can make any calls none of that so a lot of people felt like oh my gosh I'm I'm hindered I'm stopped and they, they you know I can't I can't make that call. I can't do this. I can't do that. And they felt really limited. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm exempt from it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I'm like, I didn't like the feeling of not being able to do what I felt like I needed to do at the time. Well, I'll say it like this and how it ended up screwing me over. But. Honestly, again, as I say, I'm a little old school. It's like I ain't really old school. From what some people say, but I'm in that era where we had to do what they call figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. So the thing was is that that day I had the day off of work. I was like, okay, cool, because I had doctor's appointments. My doctor appointment is all the way across town, and I've only been over there like maybe three, four times, and they moved to a new spot. So, I'm over here trying to figure it out. So, I leave early, and then I'm like, what's going on with my phone? Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to set my GPS to get me there. And I'm like, said GPS. <laughs> okay. And like, but for some reason, GPS wasn't working. I'm like, man, I got to get to this appointment. I can't be late for this appointment because right. I took off work. So, driving, I'm going the back ways. I'm going off of just sheer memory. 
of things I could remember. Okay, I turned this way, I went this way. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I asked somebody for directions. I ain't asked somebody for directions in a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. And then they were like, oh, well, if you go down here and make a left, you're almost there. You're like, you're like about three blocks away. I'm like, cool. I got there. I was like, I think it was, I was like 16 minutes late. So I apologize to the people in the office and they were like, well, can we still let them in? Because you're only supposed to be like 15 minutes late, Mm -hmm. but they let me in. And then they were like, oh yeah, our phones had issues too. I'm like, oh, so it's not just my phone? Mm -hmm. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I was like, I know I paid the bill, but um, (laughs) well, I don't know what's going on here. So after I got out of the office, other people were complaining about being late, all that kind of stuff, because they couldn't get around. Like they were like, oh, well, I couldn't go here. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And I'm like, man, we are really dependent on technology right now. Right. Because back in the day, you used to get a map, flip that mug out real quick, or you start asking for directions. Right. Like, okay, I'm trying to get over here off I-9 or uh, I-20, uh, all that kind of stuff. The thing about it is two skills were lost when, when GPS came and Google Maps happened. Right? The ability to give adequate directions... Because yeah. a lot of people going, it used to be a way where if I can't give you the street name, I can tell you what geographical thing is in Land that location, what something. landmark is there to get you, okay, you're going to turn right at the KFC, keep going down till you see a Kmart that show you how old <laughs> <laughs> this, this type of teaching is. Keep mm-hmm. going down till you see the Kmart, then make a left. And then go count two streets and make a right. Okay. I ain't got no landmarks. All I know is left at a KSC, right at a Kmart, three streets, another right, and I'm where I need to be. Yeah. So it's like, you do that to kids now, it's like, what? You do that to some adults now, they're like, what? Yeah. What's the address? Let me hit the, I'm going to just key it into the GPS so I don't have to do all And that's the thing is because... Don't get me wrong. Technology is a great thing for us to have. But sometimes I think we should teach the younger generations uh, some of those same things, too. Right. Like me and some of my friends will always bring up that uh, question. What happens in a zombie apocalypse? One, that question teaches you a lot about your friends. Yeah. Because the one question you should ask first is zombie apocalypse. Where you going? Oh, I'm going to go to such and so house. So at that point, <laughs> you feel like they got it more together than all your other friends, which yeah. is fine. You got to be able to key in and identify who got it right and who got it wrong. Right. Or who in certain scenarios got the right idea. Right. Yeah. Cool. After that, you'd be like, so, well. So what are we actually going to do? do? Because <laughs> we have to make sure we got food. Mm-hmm. Like. Be honest right now. Most people don't know how to farm. Most people do not know how to grow anything. Mm -hmm. Most people do not know how to skin any animals, kill animals, cook animals. Hell, most people haven't went fishing in forever. What I would say is this. Most people haven't even got on, went and got a book on survival, off-grid survival. They sell these books. So yeah. if you ain't never done it before, at least you got a manual to attempt. Yeah. Most people are gonna just let's think. Let's talk in reference to healthcare because it's like three phases of healthcare. We had the first phase of healthcare where you just guess and and you just do something. That's how you got people drilling holes in your head. Yeah, and if you got bumps on your nuts, they rub your balls in mercury, <laughs> like. I don't know if it's gonna work, but shoot, I'm gonna do it, and if it, and, and we gonna see. We're gonna figure it out some way. Then you got people using the scientific method, and they start introducing that into healthcare because at a certain point, they it was this one doctor I forgot his name, but he's an old doctor. I mean, he's an old tale. But what took place was they were doing autopsies in the morning and delivering babies later on that evening, and then they were noticing that the women. Who got the uh, who the, the, the 
the deliveries that they were making the births, they were noticing the mothers were dying. And yeah. it was like, she'd be fine and then she'd just die off. And then one doctor had the bright idea. He was like, look, man, man it, I don't know what it is, but it has to be some connection to the, the autopsies we're doing in the morning and then the births. And, we, and he was like, maybe we should just wash our hands. Mm. So the dude, he was like, they start washing their hands. First of all, people called him crazy, stupid, and cuckoo. Mm. But he started washing his hands, and then he noticed that people start living. Not too long after that, the dude came up and found out that oh yeah, there are microscopic bacteria and germs and viruses and stuff like that that are out here and they in the world. You can't see them, but they affect us greatly. Mm. So now we got that level. So now you went from I just make a straight up guess and just figure it and whatever happens Russian roulette to oh no no I can make a educate I can make a guess back that in some form of scientific like study or, or, or test rigorous test and then make another educated guess now and and administer that to most of people what we get into now is we incorporating technology heavily into medicine right yeah. so whereas this prescription will make that person go loopy based on this set of genes or this that they do. I know you need this medicine. You need that medicine. Instead of having to go through the process of trying to say, oh, like with diabetes. Yeah. Instead of going to a point where now I just feel weak. Now you got continuous glucose monitors. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's on your phone. I just, oh, you said I'm beeping. I need to eat. But it helps you. And it goes from person to person. Like, hey, your diet affects you this way. My diet affects me this way. And I'm able to do stuff. So we, when it comes to technology, we are getting better at using it, especially in the healthcare field. But I wouldn't say that, hey, it's going to stop much. Because think about it. Washing hands save lives. When drilling a hole in somebody, it didn't. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Like, uh, how I always just look at it is like technology, it should be something that you use because technology is ever changing. Uh, us as humans, we always learn. Like the wheel, that's technology, technology. at one point in time. Yeah. Now we don't look at that as technology. That's just a given. Yeah. But that's the whole idea is some people are just so dependent on technology. Like I'm a diabetic. That alarm just went off right now well, for my diabetes and stuff. And I could understand that. But if you're always depending on it, what happens when technology malfunctions? And what also happens when you become so dependent on technology that you don't think about what you're capable of yourself? True. Because it's some people who, when you are born, they have, you know, Illnesses like diabetes, but there's other people who you lived a certain way, and if you had changed little things in your life, you could stop yourself from becoming insulin resistant, yeah, and then ultimately contracting diabetes, yeah. So it's just like with technology, I I can use technology to help me further gauge where the point is to where I need a life change, or. I can make I can know that this exists like you say hey if, if I know how to start a fire then I granted I know I can just turn on the stove but I also know I can go rub some sticks together and the friction with, yeah. the, with the brush can make a fire because don't get me wrong technology will ever always be there in some way shape or form mm -hmm. but if all you know is the most advanced way to do things when those things stop working the way you need them to mm -hmm. is basically you're putting yourself at a handicap because like for example like my mom and grandmother were seamstresses they knew how to make clothes mm -hmm. they could do all that kind of stuff me i could sew a little bit and that's just from watching them mm -hmm. my children don't know nothing about a needle and thread clothes come from the store <clears throat> exactly <laughs> yeah, you know that's like my dad he worked on cars. Me, mm -hmm. I know a little bit around cars. I could figure it out right. as long as there ain't nothing that has to do straight with the block. Right. But I could figure out most of the things 
to get my car up and running. Mm -hmm. But again, most people nowadays, they take their car to a mechanic. Mm -hmm. So how do you know if that mechanic is going to do you right? Because you don't know nothing about you the car. Nothing. You're lost. And that's why a lot of, they say mechanics um, cheat women, which I don't think it's all, but I think there's still a lot that um, may finesse a little bit because there's a lot of women that do not know. At this point in the game, fam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. And from what I what I see, it used to be where women felt like they needed to take a man to go to the dealership or to go to the, the mechanic to, 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 you know, discuss these things and figure stuff out. Yeah. These days, why are you bringing him? He don't. He know less than you. Yeah, and that's bad. So what's the point? At this point, the the knowledge base is so dismissed and so and so cast away to the point that hey, it don't even matter. It don't matter who you bring. Yeah, because they don't know. You don't know. And and the crazy thing about it is, everybody we we got the phone, but people rarely want to use the phone for what it's actually good for. Yeah, because. One, don't get me wrong, the, the initial purpose of the phone is to communicate and talk to people. But on top of that, you got the internet right there on your phone. Every question that you have is but a Google search away. You are good enough to be dangerous. So mm -hmm. a person telling you, oh, you need you need your radiator flushed. You can go up and you can say, What why do people need radiator flushes? And they'll give you a whole three to ten minute video explaining when you see these signs and symptoms, get your radiator flush. And then you can make an educated guess. As yeah. to, okay. Based on the symptoms that this person said that has no, that they can pay by YouTube. So <laughs> me watching it, I, it's payment enough. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and do the flush or no, bro. Stop trying to cheat me. It's very true. So it's like. If you got the technology and you're not going to use it, that's a problem. But if you got the technology and you're so dependent on it to where you are incapable of doing for self, that's also a problem. It's levels to this to where I'm just like, I feel like us as people, we got to start, you know, figuring this out and going back. to. I'm not saying going back to the old ways, but I am saying know the old ways and know the old ways enough to where, hey, if it all goes belly up, I'm still going to float. True. So, we are going to go into You Won't Believe This. And You Won't Believe This is brought to you by. As always, love to shout out my beautiful wife. Love you, baby. I ask y'all to check out her pages. Yanni Like Mine, Traces Like Mine, and the website Wasted Desires. You could go on WastedDesires.com. They have waist beads, anklets, bracelets, thigh chains, all those things. Uh, Make your body glitter and shine. I ask y'all go on Traces Like Mine. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. They, um, sorry. Traces Like Mine is hair care product for a black woman by a black woman, which is actually for all black people. Mm -hmm. They have, um, she has shampoos, conditioners, things to uh, help your hair grow, shine, look better. Um, and then... Yanni like mine. Ladies, if you do not know what your Yanni is, please look it up. It does not clean itself. I also would like y'all to look up and give a great shout out to Empower You. This is Brittany Boston Up. She is a counselor that is doing a lot for the community. Mm -hmm. She actually goes out. She's wrote a couple of books. She's been on our show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. She is actually trying to help our youth to get out here in this real world, to actually stand on their own two feet, to move past old traditions and ignorance and things that we should have taught and brought up our children better. She's actually trying to build better and do better for our children. Righteous. I want to shout out Grit and Grind Fitness. That's Nate Price. Go check him out. I want to shout out Derek Kelsey. He runs a camp. He does exceptionally well. He has a lot of people that he has some very notable people who went relatively far in the in the athletic space from the from the in, information and the training that he's given them. So if you want to 
look him up. It's Derek Kelsey. You can say Derek Kelsey on Instagram. You can find him, Green Grind. Like I said, type in Green Grind, aka Nate Price. He's on Instagram as well and Facebook, I believe. Uh, also, I want to shout out Tyler Bailey. This is Luxury Clothes by Luxury Guy. When I say luxury, I do mean luxury. So if the price tag is a little high, just understand he's paying a high level of detail. Well, attention to every little detail that goes to your piece. Uh, my cousin Mike Wiggly in these gang spaces, he has a uh, he has something that is similar to what we do called SOB, S-O-B. but it's not that way. Okay, it's not that way. That's what I'm telling you. It is state of being. Go in there, check him out. If you don't like what he's saying today, listen again tomorrow. I guarantee you he's going to be saying something along the lines or, or, or posing a question that makes you think. And you and trust me, when you talk to him, he'll give you the opportunity to have a healthy dialogue to where, you know, he ain't jumping down your throat about nothing. He just really want to, you know, either educate or inform you. Or listen to what you got to say. Because maybe, hey, you saying something that he haven't really looked at to try to figure out. So, go check him out. Like I said, that's SOB, State of Being. And you can find him on multiple channels. I don't know if he's in the actual podcast, podcast space anymore. But check him out YouTube, Facebook, guaranteed. Outside of that, the main people I want to show love to here. And, you know, not saying that other people don't need love. But I need love. The main people I want to talk about is us, and that is something. The number four D A people. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and type podcast. It's gonna minimize those search results and bring us up a whole lot quicker. Remember, please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you are on any podcasting platform. That that's your Stitcher, your Apple Podcast. Your, Anything that has the term podcast associated, if you can leave us a rating. Now, let's be clear. If you wish to leave us a rating, the ideal optimal rating for us would be five stars. If for some reason you find it in your heart to where you cannot produce a five star rating for this show in particular, please hold that. (laughs) Wait. Contact us via comments and explain your grievances or whatever that might be. And hopefully we can come to a resolution. If we cannot come to a resolution, I for one fully understand. And do not, do not think that I'm someone who does not know that the podcast space at this point in the game is vast. You can go to anybody else and I will. And I hope that you can give them the five star rating that we so much desire from you. All right, cool beans. Always keep in mind that any comment that you put down at the bottom, we will read it. We will address it. And if you want to talk to us direct, find us on Facebook, find us on YouTube, find us on TikTok, as long as TikTok is here. Because I think they did pass that bill. So yeah. <laughs> TikTok won't be here long. So, you know, there's going to be one less leg of work that we got to do. Cool beans. Uh, like I said, I'm going to say it one more time, and this is special for the people in the back, okay? And when I say the people in the back, this is the people who haven't heard about it and the people that you need to tell about us, okay? And that is something, the number four, D-A people podcast if you're on YouTube. All right, so just so you know, Joey Chavez has a third baby daddy in Trayvon Diggs, who is an up-and-coming star on the NFL circuit, you know, he work, he plays with the Dallas Cowboys right now. And what they say is if you throw the ball up in his area, he coming down with it, okay? He's the interception king. And, you know, I'm not just saying that because I'm from Dallas and, and I, I choose to watch the Dallas Cowboys. Triple D. But regardless, what I am saying is let's keep, let's be clear. Joey Chavez is 30 plus. He's 25, which, okay. No real issue there for the most part. Men do it all the time because that's what women would say, right? Yeah. Now, we got to go back, though. So, I know you may not know this, but Joey Joey Chavez already has a baby with who? Bow Wow. So, you know, little Bow Wow, the one that we just don't know, know, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. He got a baby from her. Oh, but also, if... If you couldn't see further into the future and pick up on the fact that she got a baby with future, you know, 
So she's able to uh, basically put three notches in her belt, three heads on her wall to state that she's been with Bow Wow and had a successful ch- and had a child. She's been with Future and had a child, and she's also been with the uh, uh, Trayvon Diggs, and now she has a child. One, I want to know what is in it. Okay, what is in it? Because it has to be something magical nah. for three people who would be clear cut millionaires to say, out of all the women in the world, all the women with far less bags and far less people to deal with, I want her to have my kid. See, I uh, see, I, I have to. Uh, us as men, we really gotta start doing better. And what I mean by doing better, you're not going to sit here and tell me that you had some good men. Hey, hey, make sure you stay strapped up. Make sure you do these things. Hey, make sure you watch out for them gold diggers. Make sure you like. I'm just saying, when did us as men just be like anything? It don't matter. matter. It's like. Us as men, it's like so many dudes are running behind the same chick. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying certain women aren't fine. But I remember back in the day, it was like, oh, no, nah, you mess with my partner? Oh, no, nah, you mess with the crew? Nah, no. nah, you know what? I'm good. In this case, I don't necessarily even know if Future Bow Wow and Mr. Trayvon really rock like that. But what I am saying is this. There's way too many women in this world. Once you reach a certain status, I don't have to do the mess. Like dealing with mess is really for for people who are below the poverty line. Like I'm not trying to put that on them, but it just is what it is. You're not finna just necessarily go and find the next Jeff Bezos next door if you out in the wrong neighborhoods, right? It's just not how it works. Because it, it's all about a mindset. It's all about striving and, you know, trying to produce and provide for self. That being said, you show up and you just got in the lead. Why didn't nobody? We always talk about people who will tell you everything you need to know to be a football player, to be some yeah. the prime choice athlete. But they keep they keep small tidbits of very vital information away from you. True. They don't give you these parts. They don't tell you, no, don't go lay with the woman who already has two kids by two other prominent figures in their field. Like, no, you could do better. You could go. I'm not and not don't get it confused. I know when I say the term better, people are gonna be like, Oh, well, he said she less than cause she had babies. Not true. What well, I'm saying I'm kinda is, saying that. Now I'm like, I'm not gonna say that the reason I won't say it is because when she had a baby with Bow Wow, it might have actually been a loving situation. When okay. she had a baby with Future, it might have actually been a loving situation. But when you had a baby with this dude who I would perceive as a child, like you really young, fam. You're 25, fam. So I'm thinking at this point, your track record shows that majority of the stuff you're doing seems a little predatory to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, stop it. Because you so, didn't have to. I guess for me, how I'm looking at it is there there's over five billion people in this world. Righteous. So if there's over five billion, you're not gonna sit here and tell me that this woman was the only woman you could get. You're not gonna say this is the only fine woman. Oh it's not uh, true. It's, it's not. All these things like as a person, and I would say this for any man and woman, like, okay, you find something that's for you. You find something that you feel you could build forever with. If you're just willing to have a child, find the best person to have a child with. But My, I'm like, you just, it's like, I'm everybody tired. just like the I'm same one. I'm it's like that though. Because everybody keeps saying, oh, no, no, I, I just want to have a baby. What for? So, because what you because it's a lot of women out there. And I say women because it's been the women on the podcast who've mentioned this to me. And, mm-hmm. and they said, I want to I want to have a baby because they got to love me unconditionally. That is a, a, a total farce. That's a lie. <laughs> no, you could be a crappy person and your kid's yeah. not like you. So don't think this because you had a kid that there's unconditional love there. It True. all comes with conditions. You keep messing up. I'm going to keep distancing myself from you. I give distance to disobedience and disrespect. They all start with D. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that being said, I show up. I'm 25. No, they'll tell me how to catch a ball, but they won't tell me how to catch a good woman. They'll mm-hmm. tell me how to how to. They'll tell me how to run down the field, but they won't tell me how to run away from things that are detrimental to me and my career and my longevity. They won't do that for you, right? When it, there's a, what you said was there are five billion people on Earth. The part that they really need to hear more about is there are five billion people on Earth, right? Of those five billion people, there are twice as many women as there are men. Yeah. So, what place in the world does rarity not lead to value? Like I'm, I'm just saying, and don't get me wrong. I'm not going to knock any woman with children. No. But you're sitting here telling me that this woman had two children by two prominent figures. Right. Like, I, I don't see myself being number three. I'm not number three. And that's just like the same thing. I realized all these women had this baby by Future, not because Future was just the greatest father, but because they want some now, Future. He's Future. Yes. That is why you have baby by Future. You didn't think after baby number six, yeah, oh, was Future was going to change life. and he was going to be with you for the rest of his he life and all that kind of stuff. You can't tell me that lie. You won't have a future with Future. Yes. It's not, not one where you the only woman. But that's like women when, when there's so many people out here going for the same person, you make it seem like their value is just that high and all these other women's values are just that low. Hmm. There are some gorgeous women out here that don't act like certain people, that don't do the same thing as certain people, what? just like men. There are some great men out here right. that do have their stuff together, that make money, but they ain't got the future kind of mindset. Right. What I want to say is, on top of them not having the future mindset and this viable candidates all around, right? If we go and we say, oh, he did it because she's beautiful. Majority of the time, this, 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 the concept of beauty this day is cosplay. Yeah. Like, I sit back, I go, I, my face comes in the bag, my butt comes from a doctor, my breast comes from a doctor. I'm not saying that that's that woman's case. What I am saying is, for the most part, if beauty and vanity is what you seek, they got doctors and they got beauty, they got Mac and Mary Kay, and they can, they'll get you straight, straightened out. You'll be square okay. away. So, real quick, there are 7.888 billion people as of 2021 in the world. Okay. So, and that's crazy. And in in Texas, because he's a, uh, he's a football player in Dallas, Texas, there are 29.53 million people in Texas alone. In Texas alone. So, you sitting here and telling me you can't find nobody. 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 And I know somebody's going to be like, don't knock her for her hustle. The... To me, I'm like, your hustle shouldn't be hustling with your bodies and people's lives. You basically getting these children, and you. And I know somebody's going to say she could love her children, which she probably does. I, I hope her. she do. I, what, what I will say is this. If you wanted to get somebody who's guaranteed to be a housewife, you could go get her. Now, wait, I got to take... If you want to get someone who is guaranteed to be a house mother, because apparently she ain't married, not one of these three men. Yeah. If you want a house mother, somebody who I just needed a kid and I needed a daycare that came with it, please go bust a nut. Joey Chavez right over there. Yeah. Cause but it's going to be a high daycare bill. No. It's going to be high. Because you know, it is what it is. But the truth of the matter is she don't need much because Future going to be paying that child support. Bow Wow going to be paying that child support. And, and, and Mr. Trayvon is also going to be paying that child support. Yeah. So you'll be in a really elite club to keeping this woman up and she don't have to do much with her life outside of watch your kids. And she going to use the money that you paying mm-hmm. to have somebody else watch them kids. So you just like, I just, I just bust a nut for the jeans. 
But my thing is, there are way too many people out here. There are way too many women out here that will actually be a good mother, mm -hmm. will actually be a good wife. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, there's too many people out, viable ca candidates out here for dudes and, uh, let's just be real, for people just to keep going for the same people. Same thing. It's like, at some point in time, it's like, I know they say that 60% versus that um 30 and uh, was it 40% of men mm -hmm. are the ones that women want you sitting here tell me nobody in that 40% no no none of them is just uh, oh no 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 at top 1 2% that's all I want that's it just like women you sitting here tell me out of all the women in the world it's only like 10,000 of them that house group what I'm saying We got is, billions uh, What I'm saying is Of the 10,000 That you'll screw There's none of them You would marry But all of them You would have a kid with So you What you What I come to From that is this You're willing to be In fact connected To somebody For life But you don't want to be Accountable to that person For yeah. life Like you would rather Have a middle person The kid is the middle man Hey, if I need something, I ask mom. If she say no, I ask dad. But they always got to be in constant communication because I exist. So you you just understand the concept of a middleman or a middle, middle child. Like, hey, this is what goes on. When I'm in need, I got two revenue streams to reach in and pull money from. Right? What I, what I care... You didn't get married to her, so she has no. She does. She is. She has no reason to uphold your ideals for that child. Let's just say if she was atheist and you were Christian and you say, "I want my child to be raised Christian," she has no obligation to uphold that wish for you. Yeah, your child look like he's gonna be atheist today. Let's just say that she she uh. Had this idea to where, oh, you had a daughter. I survived like this. I just go get knocked up by millionaires. So instead of having your daughter go through the process of being a lawyer, doctor, engineer, or, or, or simple stuff, like just following her dreams. But get your dreams, baby. Look how good we living off me just spreading my legs and letting people who have big enough bank accounts bust nuts in me. Like that's yeah. what, that's what it is. And and don't get me confused. I'm not gonna be somebody to sit here and say that I knocked that lifestyle. According to OnlyFans and, and, and your Twitter, like that lifestyle is very profitable and, 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 and it's quite common these days to find somebody who do it and live like that so hey if that's your cup of tea that's for you but if it's if you go ask me how i feel and i'm telling you specifically how i feel about certain situations no like if i can't marry you i can't have a child with you if i and, then, and if i do have a child with you and i did not marry you then we need to be on on terms to where hey you understand that not just your thoughts and your feelings and your in, input gets imputed into my child like hey no nah, i gotta say so a real say so and it ain't based on whether i put money in your account or not because the fact that i've got to go and get the judge to make sure you got to get a if you feel like you got to get a judge on me to make sure that my kid is straight don't lay with me yeah <laughs> well do my issue comes in is because as i've gotten older i uh i feel more and more to a point where i'm like that's what you get it's like because like I used to be like, man, child support when they were talking about Nas and all these people had to pay child support. Crazy number. 40000 a month. Uh, now it got higher and higher and higher. Uh, Johnny Depp, like 65000 It was a whole it's bunch of crazy numbers. crazy numbers. But then I'm like, if you weren't married, I'm like, that's what you get. You chose that. That is what you get. Don't give me no, oh, man, she shouldn't. Uh, nah, bro. No. Because you don't have to show. Like, you got to show me. And then the only way you can really show me that you're here rocking with me is to make that commitment to me, not to the child. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I want you to make a commitment to our child. But before you even get to the thought process of the idea that you're going to have my kid carry my seat, you're going to have to carry my name. Yeah. If you can't do that, then leave me be. 
Just and, and don't tell me oh well the, 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 the welfare that did. I don't mm mm. If you ain't here rocking with me, you ain't going to carry nobody and then tell them that, oh, they got his last name. They represent me, but they have none of my ideals. They don't believe in anything that I believe because they don't deal with me anymore. Like, I'm trying to get you to hear me out on this thought process. And you like, no, ultimately, I decide what goes on with our child. At that point, you see, stop lying and saying it's our child. It's your child, but you keep saying it's ours. So the the, like, the judge will make sure that I put that check in the bank every month. Mm-hmm. But that's just like Britney Renner. Uh, uh, I'm like, it's predatory. It's like at some point in time, we gotta be like, okay, man, y'all doing too much. It's just, way too much. First of all, remember that uh, coach. Who brought, uh, I think it was Deion Sanders who brought Brittany Winter in and mm. had her explain, you know, <laughs> what women like her be looking for. And that they basically, I don't know if he had her explain to them why they shouldn't be messing with her or why they should be messing with her, but she basically told him about, you know, groupies. Mm. I was like, how did you reach a status in life to where you get brought in as a consultant? For groupies. Well, hell. I mean, honestly, if they did it the right way, I would be cool. With, uh, I would be cool with her being the spokesperson for it. Right. Hey, go to every college and explain, you, uh, explain to them. This is what they're going to do. This is what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. This is why they're trying to do it. They're going to get this money out mm-hmm. of you. All that kind yeah. of stuff. And just break it down. Go on. Hey, if you fall into his trap, then okay, cool. Don't call nobody. Don't complain to nobody. Oh my god! Because you've been warned. Yes, you've been warned. You've been been set up. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing is, it's like I'm like, what happened to OGs? What happened to the fathers and all that? It's like, hey, hey, son, it's gonna it, be it, a lot. Strap your uh, strap up or something. It's gonna be a lot of 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 this happening. For a long, I don't really feel like us as men will see the the benefits of us existing. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. In our immediate circle, like your immediate family, you'll see it because you know, got yeah. sons, I got a son, daughters, and I hope that my example. Hey, I'm not. I got your mama. That's it. I ain't trying. I'm not chasing nobody else. I'm not entertaining nobody else. I ain't giving nobody the, the room or the space. It's just me and her. We going to rock to this thing, fall off. Or if it do fall to a point where we can't communicate, don't don't think that how we move dictates how we treat you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When it comes to you, it's all love and it's all understand. We need to make this work for my kids. Period. True. But currently in my current situation, hey, look. <laughs> it's us. We rock it to the wheels, fall off. You rock with me. I rock with you. We going to stay the course. Yeah. I don't feel like that concept or that thought process is going to permeate through the the masses while I'm still here. I'll be dust and bones before we get the next generation who have a true value on mm. family dynamics. When I say family dynamics, I'm talking about husband at the home, wife at the home, kids listening and taking information from both the mother and the father about how to live this thing called life. Mm. I think it's going to be a long time before that takes place. And that's bad because, like, if you look at time, like, during all of history, like, families rocked together. Yeah. It was like 60s, 70s, 80s, even after the crack em- epidemic and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It just, even in the 90s, it was still parents that were doing that. It just seemed like once it started hitting them 2000 eras, it was like, you know what? Out the window with that. I don't want this. It's like, nah, nah, nah. I want the baby. Oh, no, no, no. I want this out of you. And mm-hmm. then it was like, oh, all that other stuff. You take that somewhere else. I don't want to. I don't have to deal with you to get what I want from you. Like, I hate. It's this old commercial. where it's, I forgot the lady name. But she's sitting back and she just. She's making fun or mocking the term compromise. She like, compromise? Why would I compromise? Mm. I would never compromise in my relationship. No, I don't compromise. I'm like, 
everything has a duality to it. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Yeah. If we look at prison, in my mind, it's a slave. It's, it's slavery. It's modern day slavery. But on the flip side of the process, and on the flip side of it, it's also a holding cell for some violent offenders, some people who ain't really got, some people who need to get switched over and understand that what you're doing is not tolerated by the civilized society. It's just not. So I'm like, it has a duality. Compromise. A lot of people feel like in order to compromise, I had to give something up in order to reach a compromise. Hey, I'm losing and they losing what we losing together. But the truth is a large portion of life and everything that we got as far as Americans came from the term compromise. Yeah. Somebody had to say, hey, I would rather us have this. And in order for us to have this, I'm willing to give you this. And I know it don't mean much to me to have this. But what you got means a lot. And what you got don't necessarily mean a lot to you. So I can give you something that's important to you, to you. And you can just give me something that's important to me, to me. The Louisiana Purchase. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's a lot of land over there that you can't necessarily protect as well as you think you can. Yeah. I'll buy that off you. Well, I want money over here. Cool. Bet. Yeah. Take that. Give me that, divvy it up, it's beneficial to us. It's a compromise. Both gained in the compromise. Yeah. Now, if they sit back and, oh, I can't compromise with you. I don't want to hear what you got to say. You don't want to hear what I got to say. Okay, guns are blazing. I'm going to take it over. <laughs> a lot of people are going to die. A lot of mamas crying. Yeah. Or we can do it this way. That's what it is. Right now, America's crying, bro. Yeah, America, America's crying because people can't hold their households together. You know what I'm saying? They out here making babies with whoever for whatever reason don't don't necessarily have any plan to go with it, and then they leave the baby to be raised by the grandmas and the uncles. They leave they leave the, the streets to raise their kids and mean, wonder why things go left. I'm gonna be real. I got a question. I wonder if condom sales are going down. Cause I'm like it gotta be going down. It's mean, like don't get me wrong. I understand that with people, uh, like don't get me wrong. It's great, but it's not worth the headache that I have to go through with for 18, 21 years, twenty three. If you go to college and all that stuff, uh, is it twenty three or twenty four now? I think it's twenty four. Okay, like twenty four years that I have to go through this issue with all my money not even just with money with my sanity hey now hold on, listen to me now now this gonna sound weird and you know when people say this gonna sound weird it really do sound weird so that's the okay i just i just put it there all right so at this point we all know that joey chavez is not going to go through the process of marrying any of her suitors. Okay. And she's going to allow the suitors, at least the million dollar suitors, to skeet up in them. Bust all up in them guts, right? True. If Would it not be a business move to say, hey, I know you find me attractive. Why? Because three people of the same caliber found me attractive. I'm going to go and get my tubes tied and you can bust up in here. You just pay me outright. Like, hey, when I want to eat steak, you just call and be like, I know what it is, how much it's going to be. <laughs> I don't have to do the child support. And then she can double up on her money because be like, yeah, you skied up in it, but I got another guy to meet in like an hour. So is you finna get yours or not? Because I got to go. I got another appointment. Mm -hmm. Rain check the vagina. Rain check on this vagina. Bring the check. He finna pay. I got to go. <laughs> what the hell? I'm just saying. There could be a lucrative business move. Granted, it's considered prostitution, but they got the I bunny ranch. just about to say they that. They got the That's bunny just... ranch. They got the bunny ranch and Hugh Hefner. <laughs> no disrespect. 
you know, but he was running the prostitution ring and recording it for the world to see. First of all, Pimp C said is the easiest money you can make is the American dream. So Pimp C was right. What I'm telling her is take control of your womanly body. Is this working yet? <laughs> take control of your body and your wants and desires. Tie your tubes and get busted in on a consistent basis. Mm. But make sure they pay. And if you're smart, be like, look, if you don't want to pay, I got I got an OnlyFans. You just got to make sure that you on camera doing this and you ain't got to pay no more. Mm, mm, At that point, she got, oh, I got Trayvon. You know, she got Trayvon clapping her from the back. On camera, she get residual revenue because they going to watch it. Wow, bro. I'm just trying to help her make wow, her bro. money because if it's about money, it's a way to make it. Man, you might as well hit the quagmire. Well, you can get a uh, thousand fat chicks for uh, uh, five hundred bucks a piece, or 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 you could get fifty really fat chicks. For, uh, <laughs> hey, you know what, what we don't. <laughs> why you here? What you what you need? I'm trying to be beneficial to you. Wow, what you need? If it's if it's really about a nut fam. She can get you one of those. If it's really about busting nut in, in a premium video. Oh no, I, I'm I'm curious real quick. I'm curious. Is the baby the um? I guess like is the baby like that bragging rights? It's like oh I got a baby by her or something because I'm like. Whatever happened to, hey, I had game enough to get this girl. Yeah. I smashed. Cool. Now no. it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I got to make sure you have my baby. Yeah. You, I, 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 people want the receipt now. <laughs> like, you say you've been with who? Where the receipt? It's a whole child over there. Look just like me. Go ask the last name. What's your name? <laughs> like, that, that's the only thing I could think of because I'm like, even if you out here wilding out, okay. Why? Why are we having all the kids though? For no apparent reason. Hey, that's what I'm saying. When you devalue one institution, the marriage institution, and you give kudos and accolades for just having a kid, because a lot of people view it as, oh, he getting played. She taking it as trophies on the wall. Yeah. Not just her. A lot of women are taking it as trophies on the wall. Out of everything I got from, at least I at least I got him to love something about me, even if it ain't actually me. It's the kid. Yeah, it's a cop out. I'm like, no. Why don't you go through the process of finding somebody who really love you, really attracted to you, really want to move down that road with you? Like a uh, Sierra. Yeah, Sierra got a baby with you. Don't you got? A, she got a baby yeah. with you. But she got a husband. And a loving relationship. And a dude really don't care one way or the other about the other goo. I'm like, I don't care nothing about you. Yeah. Live your life, fam. I'm not here to knock you. I'm not here to talk crazy about you. When they ask you, when they ask me whose son that is, yeah, that's future baby. And I'm still going to go and do for future baby as if it was mine. I don't yeah. care. I'm past that. Like, that's the thought process on that is beneath me. I don't care. <laughs> the kid needs me. I'm going to do for the kid because I'm with the woman. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Unless you got something else you want to, nah. I'm just, I think we get and we cover all topics. That being said, so this has been another episode of Some for the People. Y'all be Hold easy.